In Creo Parametric, you can create your own reference models for punch forms. In an earlier video, I showed you how PTC provides you with a punch form library that you can start off with. If I go to the form command and choose punch form, I can use this button to access PTC's punch form library, which I have pointed to with a config.pro option. But these are the wrong size for the part I want to place them in over here. So I need to create my own reference model. To do that, you will create a part model, and I'm gonna call this my sheet metal punch form for lack of originality. I wanna make sure I'm using my millimeters template, so I'm going to uncheck use default template and grab one of my other templates. All right, let's see, let's turn on my datum plane visibility. For my base geometry in here, I'm just gonna sketch a rectangle on the datum plane called top. Let me use the center rectangle and let me let it snap in over here. Let's use a value of 16 for this. And then I will right click and choose to exit out of sketch mode with the sketch still selected. I'm going to extrude and for the base, I don't need it to be big at all. I'm just going to use a value of one. Now in here, I'm going to create the geometry for the punch form. Let's start off by selecting the surface and I'm going to sketch a circle, which I'm getting to from the right mouse button menu. And let's do a diameter of 10. So that's good for that. Let's right click and use the check mark to get out of sketch mode. Let's extrude this one over here and I'm going to extrude this to a depth of two. That's good for that one. I don't need my datum plane visibility anymore. Let's turn it off to unclutter the screen. For this, I want to have it have a uh, sloped sides in here. So let's use a draft feature. I will select this surface to draft. It's automatically going to propagate to uh, tangent surfaces. Let's choose as the draft hinges this surface over here and drag this out. Let's use value of 30 degrees. All right, that is good for my draft feature. The next thing I will put in here, I want to exclude the a center hole inside of here. So I'm gonna create a sketch on this surface. Let me middle mouse button to get into sketch mode. And then from the right mouse button, I can sketch a circle. I know I'm going kind of fast through this, but these are just basic extrudes that I am creating in here. All right, let's right click and use the check mark to get out of here and then extrude this. The depth for this really doesn't matter. I'll use a depth of two and hit the check mark. Let's see the last solid features I need to create in here. Let's throw in a couple of fillets. I'll select this edge over here and then choose round and control and grab this other edge. Let's use a value of 1.25. That's good. I will hit the check mark or middle mouse button. So now I've got the geometry that I want to use in here. Uh, a couple of the things that I'm going to do. First off, let's create a coordinate system that we can use for placing this in another model. I'll click on the coordinate system command and I'll select this surface and then hold down the control key and grab this axis. Let's go to the orientation tab. And right now it's using this surface to determine the X direction. Actually, I actually want that to be the Z direction, but Z should be pointing downwards. It should be pointing away from the punch form geometry. So I'll click the flip button. Then let's activate the other collector for the direction reference. And I'll pick this surface. And man, what about X? Yeah. Doesn't matter really what direction this uh, points in here. And let's go to the properties tab and I'm gonna call this my form reference. I'll hit the okay button and my coordinate system is created. Let's use that for a component interface. I already had the coordinate system selected so it's placed in here. I always like to change the name of my component interface. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. If I expand the footer, here you can see interfaces and there is my component interface for locating this in a model. Let me turn on my coordinate system display real quick. 
I don't need this one, so let's hide it. I might as well hide my default datums while I'm at it. Actually, I have a layer that I could use for doing that. All right, so let's see. I'm going to change the color real quick just because this flat gray color is a little unappealing to me. So I'm just going to take a quick moment and change the color. There we go. Nice and pretty. The very last thing that I'm going to do in here is create an annotation feature because there is a special annotation feature for sheet metal forms. I will go to the annotation feature and then in the toolbar you've got this icon over here to specify sheet metal form model properties. And so this is very convenient. It brings open the form model dialog box. If this was going to be used as a die instead of a punch, I could select the surfaces that would be used for forming that pocket as a die form as opposed to a punch form, but this is going to be a punch form. Now for the excluded surfaces, let me hold down the control key and select these side surfaces over here, and that way these surfaces will automatically be excluded when I place the form. You don't have to abide by that selection, but it's a nice way of setting up if you know in advance, hey, I always want to exclude these surfaces when the form is placed. There is a second tab for manufacturing. Here's the name of the tool that you can use. If you want to select a reference coordinate system, you can do that. I'm having trouble picking it. Let me just grab it out of here. That's good, let's click the OK button and then click OK. And so now I've got my annotation feature and here it's got that sheet metal form template annotation inside of there. So that is good. Let me hit the save button and... All right, so I've saved it. Now let's take a look at placing it inside of the sheet metal part. So I've got it over here. Now let's go to the form command and then I'm going to use the open a punch model. Go to my punch form library. I still have it in my computer's RAM so I'm just going to grab it from in session. And then for placing it, let me select this surface over here. Oops, nope, that's not the right one. I want to get the surface underneath there. Let's remove and I'm going to query to the surface there. Now it's oriented the way that I want. Let's right mouse click and hold and choose the offset references. Maybe I want a dimension from that surface there and this surface over here. Let's plug in some different values like 30 over here. And let's change this one. Let's see how 30 looks. That's good. That's about where I want it to be. Let's take a look at the interface for placing the punch form. So right now in the placement tab, I've got the surface that it's placed on and my offset references. You can change the dimensioning scheme if you want to. Here on the shape tab, we've got automatic update. That way, if I make any changes to my reference model, I can have this part update as well. When I go to the options tab, here we have the excluded surfaces, and those exclu excluded surfaces were selected automatically because of the annotation feature I created and selected those surfaces to be removed. Here's the name of the tool and the coordinate system that it inherited from that annotation feature as well. So that's good. Let's hit the check mark. And there we have the form in the model. Let me turn off some of my different datums in here. And now it's placed the way I want it to. And if I wanted to, I could also do things like pattern it. And I can right click and use the pop-up menu to change this to a direction pattern. And let's choose this as the direction. Let's choose a spacing of 30 in this direction. I can right mouse click and hold and add a direction to reference. And let me query to the other flat surface just to get that direction. And let's make a value of 30 over here. And then I can hit the check mark or middle mouse button. And now I've got a pattern of the different forms in the model. So there you have it, how you can create your own reference model for a form and then use it for placing it, placing the forms into a sheet metal part. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. 
If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.